Hi everybody. I know it's a little while since I made one of these videos, but I had a question come up on Twitter about how to implement a decision tree in R, and I thought that would be a good topic for a quick video. So I'm going to go through an example of a decision tree which I have here. So we have some patients who have an intra-abdominal infection, and we're trying to decide between using short course antibiotics or full course antibiotics. Whichever one of those you use, there's a probability that the infection is resolved, but there's also a chance that it's not resolved. And if it's not resolved, then we attempt second line treatment, and that has a 90% success probability, regardless of whether we used short course or full course antibiotics in the first place. And you'll notice in here that short course antibiotics have a 0.6 probability of resolving the infection as the first line treatment, whereas full course antibiotics have a 0.8 probability of resolving the infection as first line. We've got some other parameters in this model. So these are the payoffs associated with the different outcomes and what have you. So short course antibiotics will cost you $250 in this example, long course $500, and second line antibiotics would cost you $1,000. And the qualities that you would get, depending on your outcomes, are 12 if you are successful in your first line treatment, 11.8 if the first line treatment fails but second line treatment is successful, and then 10.2 if the second line treatment is also unsuccessful. And the way I would recommend that you code this up in R is to write your model as a function. So just as we have done with Markov models, you would write it as a function of the parameters. And in this case, you're going to assume that the parameters are provided either as a list or a data frame, and that the elements are either scalars, i.e. single values, or vectors. So let's head on over to R and see what that looks like. OK, now we're in R and I'm going to create a new blank file for us to work in so we can start to work on our model function. So we create a model function like this. I've decided to call the parameters just P so it's nice and easy to access things. So for example, if I want the cost of a short course, I would do P dollar sign C short course. Okay, and if this is a list, I'm expecting that to be a single value of $250. Whereas if this is a data frame that has many different rows, we may be working with a probabilistic sensitivity analysis. And so this would be a vector with lots of different samples from the uncertainty distribution about the cost of short course antibiotics. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is calculate how many qualities we get if we can't resolve the infection with first line treatment. And so that's going to be somewhere between what we get when it's successful and what we get when it's unsuccessful. So these parameters are F to second line success and effectiveness of second line failure, but we need to weight these appropriately. So the failure happens with probability one minus P, P second line success. Whereas here we want the probability that the second line treatment is successful. And we'll just split that over two lines so that you can read it all. And now we're going to start to construct a list of results that we're going to return. And we'll start off with the total cost if we choose short course antibiotics. So we have to pay for the antibiotics themselves. That's this parameter. But we also might have to pay for second line treatment. But that only happens if the first line treatment is unsuccessful. So that's P short course success is the probability that that short course of antibiotics is successful 
one minus that is the probability that the short course fails. And now we also want to do the same, but for the full course, luckily here, we can just go like this. And change short to full. The quality calculations look fairly similar. So, but instead of up here, where we know that we're paying for the antibiotics, whether we're successful or not with short course antibiotics, instead we have one outcome which happens if the uh, short course does work, and one outcome that happens if the short course doesn't work. So, here we want the probability of short course being successful times the effectiveness if the infection is resolved plus what happens if it's not successful. Well, we already calculated that up here. It's effectiveness if not resolved. All good. And now we can do one last thing, which is doing that same calculation, but for long course, uh, for the full course. Okay, that's now our list of results. And we're also going to just say, if you provided us with a data frame as an input, then we're going to give you back a data frame, otherwise we'll give you back the list. Okay, now if we press source, that has run all of this code and put a model into our environment, which we can now use. So let's start off by using the model with a single set of parameters. And those single set of parameters are going to come in a list and we'll start off with those probabilities. So, the probability that the short course of antibiotics is successful was 0.6. Probability of a full course being successful was 0.8. And then the probability of second line treatment being successful was 0.9. What I like to do is line these all up just so that it stays nice and neat in my script files. It's not necessary, but it just makes things look nicer. Now, what's the cost of the short course of antibiotics? It was 250. The full course cost was 500. And then the cost of second line antibiotics was 1,000. And then finally, the qualies or the effects so if we were resolved first line, it was 12. If we had to go to second line, but that was successful, it was 11.8. And finally, if second line treatment is unsuccessful, then we have substantially reduced qualies. Okay, now I can press run or do control enter. That just runs this bit of code here where the cursor is on. So now we have single params. We've set up as a list that has nine different parameters in it. And now what we can do is run the model with that, like so. And you can see it's calculated the cost of a short course, cost of a full course, and the qualies associated with both as well. Now what we probably want to do is save that to a variable. So now we can do something like calculate the ISA. So the ISA would be the costs of the full course minus the costs of the short course, all divided by the qualies from the full course minus the qualies from the short course. And that single ISA is $694. So here 
if you go for the full course, you're paying $694 extra per quali that is gained. And that's uh, very cost effective by most people's estimations. Okay, so that was a single set of parameters, but we might also be interested in having multiple sets of parameters. So instead we might have a data frame with multiple parameters in it. And let's just say that this is in a probabilistic sensitivity analysis where we have 100 different PSA iterations. So what I am going to do is just take these from here and I will replace these single values with suitable sets of random numbers. So these are probabilities, so I'm most likely going to want to use a beta distribution. And here I'm just going to be pretty lazy and make it so that um, the two parameters add up to 100. And you know that if here you add these together, you get 100. So this is the probability of success is going to be 60 divided by 100, so 0.6, exactly as we had up there. Um, and now down here, we know that costs are going to be strictly positive. So I would normally use a gamma distribution or a log normal distribution. Um, these are probably quite precisely estimated. So I'm going to imagine that they have a fairly high shape parameter. And so then all that we need to set is the scale. And the thing with the gamma distribution is that you get the mean, the expected value, by multiplying the shape and the scale. So I've set these up so that if you do that, you get back these values here. So the expected value from these distributions are these values given up here. And I'm going to do a similar thing down here with the qualies. Uh, I'm going to assume they also can't be negative, uh, but maybe they're less well uh, characterized here, known with not quite so much precision. So instead, I've got a shape of 25. And now, instead of being able to quickly do this in my head, I did have to calculate these before recording the video. But you can go away and you can verify that if you multiply that by that, then you'll get 12 and so on and so on. Okay, so if we run those two lines, we now have multiple params and we can view that here in our studio. So the probability of a short course being successful is given by this first column. Probability of a full course being successful is in that column and so on and so on. It's probably a good idea to just take a look at these to make sure that they are in the area that you were expecting. Okay, and now what happens when we run our model with those multiple parameters? We get multiple results. So now for each row of the data frame multiple params, we have a row in the multiple res data frame. Okay, and you might not be able to tell too much just from eyeballing this, but we can do things like say, well, give me the summary, and that will give you the means, importantly, here. Or you might be looking to do a plot. So we can plot the cost effectiveness plane. So on the x axis, we want the incremental qualies. On the y axis, we want the incremental costs. And we want to give them some good labels. Uh, 
and we want this to be a plot with points rather than lines connecting the different um, data points. And if I do that, you can see we now have a cost effectiveness scatter plot has been produced. Okay, I hope this video has been helpful. Um, by all means, pop something in the comments if something's not clear. Thanks for watching.